The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Peter went up to Jesus and said, Lord, how often must I forgive my brother if he wrongs me? As often as seven times? Jesus answered, Not seven, I tell you, but seventy times. Sorry, seventy-seven times. And so the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who decided to settle his accounts with his servants. When the reckoning began, they brought him a man who owned 10,000 talents, but he had no means of paying. So his master gave orders that he should be sold together with his wife and children and all his possessions to meet the debt. At this, the servant threw himself down at his master's feet. Give me time, he said, and I will pay the whole sum. And his master's servant, and the servant's master felt so sorry for him that he let him go and canceled the debt. Now, as this servant went out, he happened to meet a fellow servant who owned him 100 denarii. And he seized him by the throat and began to throttle him. Pay what you owe me, he said. His fellow servants fell at his feet and implored him, saying, Give me time and I will pay you. But the other would not agree. On the contrary, he had him thrown into prison till he should pay the debt. His fellow servants were deeply distressed when they saw what had happened, and they went to their master and reported the whole affair to him. Then the master sent for him. You wicked servant, he said, I canceled all that, all that debt of yours when you appealed to me. Were you not bound then to have pity on your fellow servant just as I had pity on you? And in his anger, the master handed him over to the torturers till he should pay all his debt. And that is how my heavenly Father will deal with you unless you, for, you each forgive your brother from your heart. Jesus had now finished what he wanted to say and left Galilee and came into the part of Judea, which is on the other, on the far side of the Jordan. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today, I would like to speak about forgiveness. And before I begin, I want to beg for your forgiveness. Please forgive me if I say anything that may hurt you or make, make you unsettle, or may unsettle you because I might say things that may really unsettle some of you today. In our first reading from the prophet Ezekiel, the prophet was asked by God to pack his bags, his luggage, and move out of the city just like people are taken into captivity. Before this time, prophets, after prophets had warned the northern tribes of Israel and even Jerusalem and the southern tribe in Judea about the impending punishment and the consequence of turning their back on God, they failed to listen. And even their rulers, the rulers of the land, failed to listen. And so the message came strongly today in this action of the prophet leaving the city during the cover of the dark. That message was come to, is going to fulfill itself 
much later when Hezekiah, after the deportation of the northern tribe by the Assyrian, then the Babylonians are going to hit the southern part and Hezekiah is going to be captured. Hezekiah was a king. Because for failure to tell the truth, to tell the people what they should do and to enable them to follow the, the statutes of the commandments of God, his punishment was going to be more. What happened to Hezekiah was something that I'm pretty sure he never forgave himself for the rest of his life. Everyone was taken into captivity. Himself was captured. His two sons, the last thing he saw, his two sons were brutally murdered in front of him and his eyes were plucked. When the enemy murdered his son, they plucked his both eyes and put him in chains and led him out of the city into exile. And I'm sure he would live to remember that and he would never forgive himself, even in death, for failure to do what he has been asked to do by the prophets. In our first reading today, Jesus is telling us about the importance, the need to forgive, why we should forgive, and what it takes to forgive. I know forgiveness is something that we all struggle with, including myself. I have struggled with this many times myself. When we talk about forgiveness, forgiveness is not forgetfulness. I need to make that point clear because sometimes when you forgive people because of the immensity of the hurt you have suffered, you may not easily forget. It doesn't mean you are a sinner if you cannot forget. But if you keep it in mind with the intention to revenge when the opportunity comes, then that is not forgiveness. So sometimes you may forgive and may never forget. That doesn't make you sinful. And I think God himself has forgiven the world for crucifying his son. But can we say God has forgotten? He hasn't. He knows that Jesus died on the cross. But he's not punishing us because of that. Because Jesus prayed to God to forgive those who crucified him. And I'm pretty sure. It is because of the importance of forgiveness that it became the central point of Jesus' teaching. In the parable, in the story he told in our gospel reading today, of a servant who owned his master 10,000 talents, 10,000 talents today would be compared to a state, a budget of two to three states put together. That would be over 100 million days of labor. For one person. It's about the budget of two to three states put together depending on the size of the state. And even in some places, it could be equivalent to a budget of a whole province. And this fellow servant, this servant came and pleaded with his master. The master forgave him because he has asked for forgiveness. Even though he had ordered that he be sold, his wife, his children, and everything traceable to his name, but that wouldn't still meet the debt. But he forgave him. And when he went out of his master's house, he met a fellow servant who owned him 100 denarii. 100 denarii is, a, is about one month's salary of an average laborer. And this man pleaded with his fellow servant and said, please give me time and I will pay you. And he wouldn't listen. In anger, he threw him into prison until he is able to pay his debt. And when the fellow servants saw this, they were unhappy, and they went and reported to their master what he, what he did. The master sent for him and punished him. And Jesus said, my heavenly father would deal with you in the same way if you fail to forgive your brothers or your sisters from your heart. Forgiveness is not a sign of weakness, as many of us may think. It is a sign of strength. Because when we forgive, we let go of that negative energy, negative power that causes anger in us. It takes a strong heart to let go. It doesn't take a weak heart to let go. So forgiveness is a sign of strength. It's not a sign of uh, weakness. Forgiveness is an acceptance of victory. It's not a sign of defeat. That you allow, you don't allow, you 
you enable yourself to, vic- to, to come out victorious over anger, over suppressed anger, over bitterness, over hatred. You don't allow yourself to be imprisoned by those negative feelings. You conquer them, and then you come out of it. So you become victorious. It's not a sign of defeat, as many of us may think, that when you forgive, then you have accepted defeat. It is not a gift you offer to the offender. It is a gift you give to yourself. You offer yourself the gift of peace. Sometimes we feel when you forgive someone else, you make them feel better, and then you are giving them a gift that they don't deserve. It is not a gift you offer to them, but by letting go, you are offering yourself a special gift of peace. You do realize that when you let go of offenses, you feel some kind of inner peace and tranquility in your heart. Forgiveness also, it's not something that someone deserves all the time. You don't forgive people because they deserve your forgiveness. You forgive them because you deserve peace. And many of us sometimes we feel, well, if I forgive this person, he may still do it again. So he doesn't deserve it. After all, I don't deserve to be treated like this. The way he treated me, I should hold on to this. What will anger serve? It will not serve anything. Anger, I've always said, because it comes from lack of forgiveness sometimes, it builds into anger and then it builds into rage. When you hold on to anger, it's like a fire that consumes you. It doesn't burn anyone else except yourself. And I've always said that when we handle anger, we need to be careful because anger is only one letter away from danger. So sometimes when we think about letting go, about forgiving people, we feel we are giving them a gift or we are accepting a defeat or we give them opportunity to do it again. No. The person you forgive may never ask for it. The person you forgive need your forgiveness. Can't you see what Jesus did when he was on the cross? He knows that those who crucify him will never ask for forgiveness. Even if they ask, they will never deserve it. But he knows that they need his forgiveness. And that is why he said to God, Father, forgive them because they don't know what they are doing. My dear friends, Is there anyone in your life today that you need to forgive? Yes, you can think of many of them now. But forgiveness sometimes is not always about people, about others, about ourselves. Because many people today live in danger of great guilt, of grave guilt, because we have refused to forgive ourselves. Can't you think that When you take a particular sin to reconciliation once or twice, you are rejecting God's forgiveness. Sometimes God forgives us, but we can't forgive ourselves. We can't let go. And so we are trapped in our past. We are imprisoned in that past that we can't move on. You need to forgive yourself. If God will forgive you, who are you not to forgive yourself? Because when we sin, sometimes we sin against others, against God, and against ourselves. And so we need to say sorry to others. We need to say sorry to God. But we also need to say sorry to ourselves. Some of these things can be quite embarrassing. And we feel, why and how on earth did I do this? You are human. That is why you did it. And you have to let go so that you can move on. And sometimes when we try to forgive others, they may not want to accept it. They will reject it. Try your best, forgive them whether they accept or reject it, it is not your problem. In our first reading today, the king and the Israelites as a nation was punished because they rejected God's forgiveness. They failed to acknowledge their sins. They didn't even acknowledge it in the first place. And so they got so used to sin that it was no longer sinful to them. Their actions for them was normal. Just like we live in the world of sin today that many people don't consider anything sinful anymore. And so they even don't even want to ask for forgiveness. We should approach God and ask for forgiveness. But for some of us who are Catholics, because we, are very, we have so many opportunities to recon, for reconciliation, 
we commit sin as often as we want to. The danger in it is that when you commit a particular sin so many times, it begins to form a habit. And once that habit is formed, it could be very difficult to break. God always forgives. And that is why when Jesus was asked by Peter, how often must I forgive my, son, my brother? Because at that time, their tradition was, you can forgive someone three times. When you forgive them after three times, then you can punish after that, or you can revenge. But Peter didn't even say three. He went as far as seven, hoping that Jesus would say, well done, you have done so well. But Jesus said to him, not seven times, but 77 times, which means you must always forgive. My dear friends, forgiveness is not optional. There are no other ways around it. Let us pray that God will give us the grace to ask for forgiveness for our sins, to be willing to accept God's forgiveness, to ask others for forgiveness, the humility to ask for forgiveness, and also the charity and the generosity of heart to be able to forgive others from our heart. May God bless you. Oh